I'm Summer Russell and I'm a flight instructor here at Learn to Fly and today I'll be taking you through a pre-flight for a Diamond DA42 aircraft. To do the pre-flight we'll start in the cockpit and we'll work our way around towards the left engine and left wing, moving through the fuselage towards the tail and then heading around to the right wing and right engine and finishing off back in the cockpit. The pre-flight starts when we walk out to the aircraft. We want to check the general condition of the aircraft and make sure that it is in a normal ground attitude, meaning that the wings are level. If the wings are not level, it could mean that there's an issue with the landing gear or that one of the tyres may be flat. The next thing we want to do is remove the cover. To remove the cover, we simply unclip the buckles and remove any Velcro. Once we've done that, we can then gently remove the cover from the aircraft. When we do this, we want to be very careful and ensure that the buckles don't scratch the surface of the aircraft. Once the cover has been removed, we can then place it gently into the rear of the aircraft. If the cover is wet, then we want to take it to the entrance to the apron and place it in a position that will allow it to dry. Now we're going to remove the pedo cover by undoing the Velcro and pulling it off. We use the pedo cover to protect the pedo tube from any kind of debris that may enter into these holes. So after we've taken the cover off, just visually checking for any debris. We can then step up onto the aircraft, ensuring we only stand in the designated grey areas and then open the canopy. Our first part to our Diamond DA42 pre-flight is to check the cockpit. We're going to be checking the aircraft documentation as well as checking the cockpit for any foreign objects or control locks and checking the switches in G1000 system as well. The first thing we want to do is to check the aircraft documents. We're checking two things. Firstly, we're checking the trip sheet. We want to ensure that our name and our pilot in command's name is filled out and the engine video and flight switch are also filled out. Once we've checked the fuel and oil, we can also enter those. Once we've done that, we want to have a look at our maintenance release. First, we want to check we have the correct maintenance release and then we can check the date and time of the aircraft expiry have not passed. To check the time, we can either reference the G1000, which we'll look at in a moment. Otherwise, if it's the first flight of the day, we can flick over to the rear side of the maintenance release and check the flight switch. While we're here, we can also ensure that the aircraft has been signed for today, and if not, ensure your instructor does so. We can then flip back over and check the aircraft is approved to fly in the category we're operating in. Then we can follow along to the scheduled maintenance. We want to check that any scheduled maintenance due before the current date or engine time has been completed and signed off. And then finally, we can come down to any pilot endorsements and ensure that they have either been cleared or if they haven't, make sure they won't affect the operations you are planning to conduct during your flight. If you're unsure, you can always check with your instructor. We also want to check that we have an aircraft flight manual and G1000 guide in the cockpit. We can then begin to prepare the cockpit by removing the control lock. We do this by simply unclipping the buckle on either side and then gently removing the metal pole. Firstly, we want to check that the circuit breakers are all in. And then we want to ensure that the start key has been pulled out. Once we've done so, we can then turn the electric master on. While we wait for the G1000 system to boot up, we can ensure that the gear lever is in the down position and we have three green lights. Now that the G1000 system has booted up, we can check the aviation system is in date and press this enter button. Once we've done so, we can then press the engine page and go across to the fuel page. Once we're here, we can check the gallons used and gallons remaining and reset if needed. We can also check the flight switch at the bottom to ensure it matches our maintenance release. We now want to prepare the aircraft for our walk around by ensuring that the pipe brake is on and then turning all external lights on. We can also turn the pedo heat on and we can extend the flaps all the way down to the landing configuration. We can now begin our external checks, checking the landing light and the stall warning. Moving along to the position and strobe lights on the left wingtip. We also want to check the pedo heat, ensuring it's warm. 
then moving around to the strobe and position lights on the right wing. Once we've done so, we can head back into the cockpit, turning all the lights off, the pitot heat off, and then turning the master switch off as well. The next part of our pre-flight inspection is to check the left main gear, the left engine, and along the left wing. The first thing we want to do is check the seal for the canopy door and ensure that it's not coming off. We can then go ahead and check the left landing gear, including the tyre ensuring that the tread has not been worn through and that the brake pad is intact. Checking the suspension and then moving up towards the gear well. In the gear well, we want to check that all parts are intact, including the gear down and the gear up switch and then checking for any debris within the gear well, ensuring it's all clear. We can then go ahead and check the exhaust. When we check the exhaust, we want to check for any blue residue, as that could be indicative of a coolant leak. We then want to go ahead and check the air vents. We want to ensure that all air intakes and vents are checked properly. Take your time doing this check, as even one blockage could cause problems in the engine. The next thing to do is to check the gearbox oil. What we're checking is that it's slightly yellow in colour and that there's a small air bubble. Once we've done that, we can now check the oil dipstick to ensure that there's sufficient oil in the engine. When we check the dipstick, we want to ensure that there's oil in that bottom section of the stick. We can then place the dipstick back and ensure that the latch is shut and secured. The next thing we're going to do is check the overall condition of the engine cowling ensuring that no screws are missing or popping out. We can then go ahead and also check the propeller blade, running our hand gently along each surface, ensuring there are no major chips. We can then also check the overall condition of the propeller hub. Next, we're gonna check the auxiliary fuel tanks. The DA42 is equipped with two diesel engines that can either take diesel or Jet A1 fuel. At Moorabbin, we only have access to Jet A1 fuel. You may notice upon visual inspection that the auxiliary tanks appear empty. This will be the case most of the time unless you have an afternoon or evening flight, in which case they may be used when Jet A1 refuelers are not available. We can now go ahead and drain the left fuel tank. Because we're dealing with Jet A1 fuel, we want to ensure that we wear gloves whenever we're draining the tanks. When we drain the tanks, we were checking for two things. Firstly, we're checking for the presence of any algae. And secondly, we're checking for the presence of water. If there is water in the fuel, it will separate the same way that oil separates from water. Upon draining the tanks, we can see that there is a large bubble underneath the layer of Jet A1. That is actually water. So in this case, we have found that there's water in the tanks. In this situation, what we want to do is we want to pour that mixture out and redrain the tank. We continue repeating this process until there's no water left in the tank. Next, we're going to check the wing's leading edge, running your hand gently along the surface and ensuring that there are no major dents or marks. We're now going to check the fuel tank, undoing the fuel cap and visually inspecting the level of fuel. Once we're done inspecting, place the fuel cap back on gently, taking note that sometimes it is difficult to close. We can then go ahead and remove the tie down from the left side and we can check the wing tip ensuring that there is no physical damage and that the static wicks are all intact. We can now check the condition of the aileron and the flap, beginning on the upper surface, running your hand gently along both surfaces. Also checking any hinges to ensure that there is no damage. We can then move back along the underside, checking any vents, and again checking any hinges to ensure that they are all intact. We also want to check the fixed trim tab on the aileron and ensure that those screws are intact as well. Once we've done so, we can now test the movement of the ailerons by grabbing on to the aileron horn and simply moving the aileron up and down. We want to check that the opposite aileron is moving as well. We can then do the same thing on the flap, grabbing again this time on the flap horn and gently moving up and down, testing for slight movement. Finishing off by checking any final hinges on the undersurface of the flap. We 
can now drain the left auxiliary fuel tank. We do the same thing we did for the main tank, ensuring that we're wearing gloves and checking for the presence of both algae and water. For the next part of our pre-flight, we're going to be checking the fuselage and the tail, also sometimes known as the empennage. We'll be checking the overall condition as well as some of the antennas and the control surfaces and linkages. We begin by checking the left step, ensuring that it's secure. As we move along the fuselage, we want to check that the autopilot static port is clear and then we can go ahead and check the antennas, ensuring that there is no damage to any of them. We can then go ahead and check the rest of the fuselage, gently running our hand along the surface until we get to the empennage. We can now go ahead and check the rudder, ensuring that any linkages or hinges between the tail and the rudder are secure, including the rudder cables, ensuring that there are no bolts or screws missing as well. We can then go ahead and check the skin or the surface for any damage, and come along to check the static wick along the rudder. We also want to check the adjustable rudder trim tab is secure and then continuing to check any linkages or hinges that we find. We want to check the tail skid, ensure there's no damage that could have been caused during takeoff or landing. And then we can come along to the other side, checking again any linkages or hinges, ensuring the rudder cable and any bolts and screws are secure. Once we've done so, we can now go ahead and check the horizontal stabiliser, checking any static wicks as well as the surface or skin and finally, any linkages or hinges, ensuring that there is no damage. We want to check the attachment between the horizontal stabiliser and the adjustable trim tab, ensuring that everything is secure and there are no screws or bolts missing. And continuing along the other side. We can now continue down the other side of the vertical stabiliser and back along the fuselage, checking the condition of the skin and ensuring that there is no damage. We can also check the condition of the static port as well as the right step. We'll now move on to the right wing. Again, checking the condition of the right main gear as well as the engine and along the wing. To begin the right side, we're going to drain the auxiliary fuel tank, doing the same thing we did on the left side, ensuring that there's no water or algae present. We can now check the condition of the right wing and the control surfaces attached to it. We're checking any linkages or hinges to ensure that all bolts and screws are intact. We want to check the movement of the flap again, grabbing onto the flap horn and gently moving up and down. We can then move along to the aileron, checking the condition of any bolts and screws, ensuring the hinges are intact. And again, checking the movement of the aileron by simply grabbing onto the aileron horn. We want to check the opposite ailerons moving as well as the aileron we're holding. We can finish off the underside of the flap by checking any air vents or intakes that may be located on the underside of the engine cowling. We want to continue back along the upper surface of the flap and aileron, again ensuring that any hinges or linkages are secure, there are no bolts or screws missing. As we come along we're also checking the skin of the aircraft, ensuring that there is no physical damage. Once we reach the wing tip, we're checking the static wicks are intact and then checking the skin of the wing tip, ensuring that there is no physical damage. We now want to remove the right tie down, gently unclipping it from the aircraft. Once we've done so, we then want to check the fuel quantity. We do this by simply removing the fuel cap and visually inspecting the inside of the tank. We then want to make our way along the leading edge of the right wing, checking the skin for any physical damage, cracks or chips, etc. We can now conduct our final fuel drain of the right fuel tank. We want to ensure that we are wearing our gloves once again and checking for the presence of water and algae. We want to ensure that we drain both drainage points and closely inspect the fuel after each drain. We can now check the auxiliary fuel tank on the right side. Again, as a reminder, most of the time this tank will be empty. However, on afternoon or evening flights, it is likely that this tank may be filled. We can now check the condition of the engine cowling, ensuring that there are no screws missing and there's no physical damage to the exterior. We also want to come down and check the exhaust, 
ensuring again that there's no blue residue that may be indicative of a coolant leak. We can now continue around the rest of the engine checking any air intakes to ensure that they are clear of blockages. We want to now check the right gearbox oil, again looking for that slight yellow colour and a small air bubble. Once we've done so, we can check the condition of the propeller, running our hands gently along the outside, checking for chips or marks. And finally, checking the condition of the propeller hub. We can now check the engine oil, gently removing the dipstick and having a visual inspection of our oil level, ensuring we place it back securely. We can now move along to the right landing gear, ensuring that the tyre is inflated and the tread is intact. Then checking the brake pads aren't worn and moving up towards the suspension. We then want to make our way up towards the gear well, ensuring that there are no bolts or screws missing, no wires or cords are broken. We then want to check the gear up switch inside the gear well and then check the overall condition of the gear well. We can then finish off by checking the canopy seal on the right side. The final part of our pre-flight is to check the nose, make sure that the baggage compartments are secure and checking the nose gear as well as the tyre. We begin the final part of our pre-flight by checking the right side of the nose, ensuring that the baggage compartment is locked. And once we've done so, running our hand along the nose of the aircraft, ensuring that the skin is intact. We then want to check also that the left baggage compartment is locked. We can then finish our pre-flight by checking the nose wheel, ensuring that the wheel is inflated and the tread is intact. And then checking the overall condition of the wheel strut, making our way up into the gear well. As we make our way up into the gear well, we want to check the overall condition, ensuring that there is nothing missing or damaged. Checking the gear up and gear down switches, as always. And that concludes our pre-flight inspection for the Diamond DA-42 aircraft. Now let's go flying! <laughs>